This, the, the other reason for need is you're trying to remember nobody, it's a survival instinct. This is primitive brain stuff. It's a survival instinct to always minimize the severity of your condition because the primitive brain goes, if I'm weak, if I'm damaged and I can't function, I'm going to die. Now, modern society, you're not going to die, but the instinct is to always downplay it and not face that fact. So there's always going to be a tendency to downplay. Of course, you do have the other 20% of patients who like to exaggerate their condition. And they have other needs. They want attention and stuff like that. So you're trying to balance those things. But the main thing you're trying to do is you're trying to wake somebody up to the reality of your situation. You know, it's the same way where you go, you know, everybody knows your spouse is cheating on you, but you don't believe anybody. I got to wake you up. You look like an idiot. You, you, you see what I'm saying? I don't know if you ever had those conversations where you have someone you care about. They're doing something stupid, self-destructive, and you're like, wake up. I need you to wake up. You're ruining yourself. That's what these patients are doing. So what you're doing here, this is a critical, important skill because you have to wake them up. So the trick is skill. Get good at this. Get really good at this. Dig into it. This is sales. This is all sales. That's what everything I'm teaching you here is if you go to a sales class, they're going to teach you this. I'm teaching you why you have to be a good salesman. Because if you're not a good salesman, you are a bad, bad, bad doctor. Or you could be the best doctor in the world and nobody does what you say because you can't convince them that you're a good doctor. And because you don't care. If you really care about your patients, you'll learn this stuff. And that's why Gamby does this naturally. That's why his numbers are naturally higher. He naturally, and I had to teach him this because he didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But once he got it, once he goes, oh, these are my, these are my, I mean, that dude loves his patients. And I had to teach him, if you really love them, you're going to tell them what they need and what they want rather than what they want to hear. You're going to worry about them getting better, not about the way they see you. And as soon as he stopped caring, because he wanted them all to like him, because he liked them, he wanted them to like him. And as soon as he started, that's why I tell the doctors, you always go for, you don't go for like. I'm like, don't get them to like you because you're so nice to them. Get them to respect you. Um, open any questions. So, any questions about that so far? So you already know how to do this. You gotta do this fast. This doesn't take a lot of time. Open any question. Yeah, I can't wipe my butt. Now, then you gotta quantify it if you can. So you go into open it, then you menu it, get lots of detail, get highly specific you're still not done. The critical, you know you've done it right when you get an emotional response. Because I can talk about, no, I can't wipe my butt. No, I can't go to work. No, I can't take care of my kids. No, I have trouble nursing. No, and I can tell you really bad stuff. No, I can't have sex with my wife. I can tell you that and not be emotional about it. So then you have to do, this is black belt level. You've got need, you know it's affecting their life in a very negative way, then you go to emotion. Quantify, and then emotion. So you can't work. Does that bother you? How do you feel? Yeah. And that's where they go, it's great. It's like, oh, there it is, that's the Or thing. they go, it sucks. Yeah. And, and really, this is the one I keep poking at. Mm -hmm. It sucks, how does it suck? How does that make you feel? Are you the primary breadwinner for your family? I've literally asked, how does that make you feel when your wife and kids are depending on you and you said you don't have a lot of money in the bank and you can't work? Or you're worried about getting fired because you work so slowly. How does that make you feel? See? And they look you in the eye and they go, it really sucks. And when they get quiet. They shuffle in their chair and they yep. start looking down and get all misty eyed. See, see? and Red doctors don't want to ask that. They don't think it's their business. You better believe it's my business. That's why I do what I do. That's why I come to the office, so I want to know. And, you, and then I look them right in the eye and I'm like, that absolutely sucks. I'm going to do everything I can to get you back. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine how that feels. That's got to be terrifying. And I put myself in their shoes and I try and connect with them because now I'm on a mission and that motivates me. Now I'm like, all right, I'm, I gotta step it up for this guy. I gotta do everything I can and that's what makes my job fun. Now I'm not fixing some dude's back. I'm not worried about your discs in your back that are decayed and about weightlifting. I'm like, no, now I've got purpose in my life. 
now I'm not a quack adjusted people trying to cure all these, make myself look good. I'm like, it ain't about me anymore. I'm like, I gotta get this dude back to work. He's got kids that are counting on him, you know? His kids are gonna eat because of me. Now, here's the thing. So you go open-ended and you expect to be rejected 50% of the time. They're like, eh, it doesn't. So then you dig with high specificity and quantify. Boom, boom, boom. Then you're watching their reaction. You gotta have these questions so ingrained. And I got a list of good questions there to help you. They're really good questions. They're things like, you know, uh, how, how, you know, obviously you do all the work things, but if you get rejected, rejected, and you're not going anywhere, you start asking questions like, do you have to take medication for it? How do you modify your life? Um, are you, you know, when they say something like, eh, I have to work a lot slower, you ask questions like, are you okay with that? Do you think your back is going to get better, worse, or stay the same over time? Because they don't think like that. Um, actually, I think it's going to get worse over time. Are you okay with it getting worse over time? See? So, this is going to take practice. Memorize those questions. Practice those questions. This really has to be role-played in tricky situations to learn how to dig until you reach those questions. Now, in some cases, you're going to ask an open-ended question, and eh, it doesn't really affect my life. Then you're going to go into work and sleep and hobbies. Hobbies are kind of the fourth one. It's work, sleep, and personal care. Showering, bathing, dressing. Carrying stuff. groceries. Then. Carrying groceries, yes. Um, and you're watching their face, because you'll say, does it affect your personal care, showering, bathing, groceries? No. Boom, go on. Then you go into hobbies. For, for men, it's yard work. And women, too, would be gardening and stuff like that. For women, it's chores around the house, taking care of kids. Could and stuff like sports, that. too. You know, sports could be big. Guys, but you yeah. can't golf anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like what do you, and I always say, what do you love to do? <laughs> what do you? Because I don't care about what... They may not care about yard work. What do you love that's the emotion? What's your favorite thing to do? If you could do something every day, what would it be? This. How is your low back pain affecting your ability to do that? Okay, now, sometimes about 25% of the time, you're not gonna get any hits. No, 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 no. Okay, so it would go, so you're telling me that your back problem doesn't affect your sleep, doesn't affect your work in any way. You work exact same speed, doesn't distract you, doesn't bother you in any way. You know it's there, but you don't really care, has no impact on your life whatsoever. If you ask that question and they go, that's exactly what I'm saying. Move on. You're done. There's nothing there to get. As long as you did these, though. Because, see, remember, they might not even realize these. But if you've already done these, you've already picked through all the main ones, then you go to... And you can do it on, on work. Does this affect your work? Yeah, kind of. Inevitably, you've got the hamster running, though. So the next yeah. time they come in, you know, I noticed this week, since you mentioned it, that it actually does affect this. Yeah, it could. Because they feel bad because they realize it because now you got you got the hamster. That's exactly it. And they're thinking about it and they come back and they're like, oh, I didn't want you to think I lied to you. So let me tell you, it's that powerful. It's a very strong emotion. So it's the reverse negative is fun. I use it all the time. Once it gives I, you a good We do this. We figure out what their need is for them. A lot of times they don't even know. They block this stuff out of their head. I figure that out. Then we also have to do what's called the anchor. Um... And then when I'm done with that, I summarize it and I repeat it all back to them. And I go, so let me get this straight. You've had this neck problem for 15 years, started after a car accident, didn't bother you for the first 10 years after the accident, then it started bothering you more. It's gradually gotten worse. It's gotten up to where it's a two out of seven and it's affecting your life. You takes you longer to fall asleep and you still get a good night's rest. But the big one is that it affects your ability to clean the house. And you can't stand a dirty house. So even though you're in agonizing pain and it's midnight, you're going to clean the house. And it's hard. But that's hard for you. you, you if, if I could get rid of your pain for an hour a day, it'd be while you're cleaning so you can clean more effectively. Because that's what matters to you, keeping a clean house. And, um, yeah, it does affect your ability to dress and bathe and slower. But the big thing is the clean house. That's what matters to you. Um, do I have a clear understanding of your problem? And... and 50% of the time they look at me and go, you understand my problem better than I do. <laughs> That's their way of saying thanks. You figured stuff out that I didn't even realize how it was affecting my life. And it's kind of a thank you. And then you move on to the next thing. So, But what that does is 
When you can extract information out of them, it builds trust. Trust goes through the roof. And that's why you know you're good, a good doctor when you have those 10% of patients who get bad results referring all their friends and family to you. You didn't help <laughs> me, but you gotta go see him, he's the best. And they're just simply saying, I trust him. And that's more important than being a good adjuster. It's more important than being good treatment plans. The most important thing you do is build trust with people because they just go, you know what? He tells it like it is. He didn't help me, but he's good. You know, And that's what I'm trying to teach you to do is open up to people, bond with people, connect with people, manipulate them in the way they want to be manipulated, and then be honest and straightforward with them. And life is good. And bond with them emotionally. Get connected to them. So, okay. Questions about need? Okay.